In this exercise tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how you can do a reverse crunch with a Swiss ball. Now, a lot of the time I'll get asked about this question where people have looked at a variation of how to do this and they go, I just can't do it. Now there's two variations for this exercise and if you have a really big Swiss ball like this, the first variation just isn't gonna work. So if you try copying other people doing a style, a singular style of the reverse crunch, you're just not gonna be able to do it. And that leaves people wondering what they're doing wrong. That's where the second variation is way more suitable for people using a really big Swiss ball like I am. If you've got a smaller Swiss ball, the first variation actually will work really well. So let me show you both. Now you're in the same position for both with regards being on your back and looking up towards the sky or ceiling. For the first variation, this is the one where I wouldn't suggest doing this with a large Swiss ball like I've got, just because you won't have the range of motion. You can have your hands by your sides or outstretched away from your body. You'll notice here I've got the back of my leg and my calves in contact with the ball. And what you're gonna do is dig your heels into the ball and bring your knees up. Digging your heels into the ball and bringing your knees up. So you'll notice there I don't have too much range of motion. So that exercise is just a non-starter. But if the Swiss ball I was using was a lot smaller, that would be a fantastic version of the reverse crunch. So if you can't do that one, I want you to imagine here, I'm, I've got the ball either side, my feet are clamping into the ball. From here, I'm gonna squeeze my core. I'm now gonna bring my knees up and come back down to my start position. My back is completely in contact with the mat at all times. I brace my core, knees up, knees back down. If I wanna make it even harder, I'm gonna bring the ball even further away. Again, bracing my core, feet are clamped into the ball, they're pushing in towards the middle of the ball, straight up and back down while keeping that same position with my knees during the exercise. So if you've got a smaller ball, variation number one is gonna be a really nice one for you. If you've got a large Swiss ball, variation number two is gonna be better. Try both out, see what you think, and of course do them for your desired amount of sets and repetitions.